Let me start by thanking Africa Society and the co-hosts, the Honorable Senator Richard Luger and the Honorable Congressman Donald Payne by making this event possible. I congratulate you for this great initiative which constitutes an opportunity to discuss matters on common interests and deepen relations between the U.S. and Africa in general, and in this case, and Angola in particular. Dear friends, Angola is a post-conflict country. The signing of the peace agreement on April 4, 2002, represented a watershed change in the lives of all Angolans giving a way to the possibility to returning to their places of origin, resuming regular activities, and reuniting for family, neighbor, and friends. Over the past three years, the Angolan government is taking concrete steps in preparation for elections. The issue of timing for the elections needed more in-depth considerations. The timetable of the government of Angola includes various stages such as reallocation of international displaced people, demining, and preparation of the legal framework for the elections. Some other electoral bodies were created such as the National Electoral Commission, NAC, Tax with the electoral process element implementation. The Interministerial Commission for Electoral Process, SIP, established to create logistical and operational conditions for NEC to implement the electoral process. Tration period is coming to a close. The process was expected to register 7.5 million voters, but to date, 8.5 million voters are resisted. The current last phase is expected to resist about 350,000 more voters. Parliamentary elections are scheduled to take place in September 2008, this year, and the presidential elections in, nine, in 2009. President José Eduardo dos Santos reaffirmed recently that conditions are now for the country to hold efficient, fair, and transparent elections. Despite the complexity, I am proud to reiterate that my government is strongly committed to the forthcoming national elections as a unique opportunity to deepen the democratic process in keeping with the period of, of constitutional legitimization of the power. Ladies and gentlemen, in the last 60 years, Angola has registered significant economic growth. It is considered among the fastest growing co economies in the world. In spite of the current economic growth, much remains to be accomplished. Some of the main challenges now facing Angola are the improvement of the infrastructure and creating conditions for the economy to diversify, as well as reducing and eradicating poverty. Angola, through, Angola throughout the duration of the armed conflict, did not stop oil supply to the United States. And today, being the seventh provider of oil to the United States, Angola provides about 10% of the U.S. needs in oil. With the, with the peace it, may, it is enjoying now, will continue to be a significant energy security pattern for the United States. Looking ahead, we hope for effective collaboration with the Congress and with and wish to arrange a congressional delegation to Angola in the near future in order to witness in loco the new Angola. In conclusion, I'd like to share 
that in the next few years, Angola has the potential to become a completely transformed country. But for this to be realized, the government, the civil society, the private partners, and the international partners must work together with Angola. We have the political and visionary leadership to move forward. We count to continued cooperation with distinguished partners such as gathered here tonight. I thank you all very much. Thank you. If you have suggestions on how you can help, that's why we're here. I mean, we all get together and we all have social events. We have one tomorrow night. We have, you ambassadors have them every night of the week, so you have to pick and choose. That's not what we want here. We want some concrete action emanating from this program that's markedly different. Because a lot of ambassadors sitting here, they don't get the chance to see Senator Luger. And Congressman Payne is increasingly more and more busy, and he tries to see everybody as does Congressman as Senator Luger. But there are other members of Congress who they never get to see. So this is their shot. So I just want to reiterate um, that we, we're taking this very seriously. And for those ambassadors, the ambas ambassador from South Africa is next, Ambassador Mapo, and in, in the capital next month. We, we want some outcomes here, not just talk and dinner. And uh, you remind us of the situation that's confronting your country. Democracy is a process. We expect it to happen overnight and to be like ours, and yet we don't take into consideration the war, the poverty, the people who are disenfranchised. And so you've helped us understand what you're up against, and I congratulate you um, for having the courage to come before us and give us really such a cogent presentation. Thank you very much.